So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever he wants to guide, he will open their heart to Islam. And whoever he wants to lead astray, their chest, their heart, their breast, their lungs will constrict. Now, brothers and sisters, it's, this lesson, this lecture is about advice to, non, to new Muslims. Now, a lot of us might be Muslims, born Muslims, but this applies to you too. Why? Because at one point in your life, you made a decision. You've basically converted to Islam. You basically decided that today I'm going to start practicing Islam. And guess what? This is exactly what someone who becomes Muslim. So you've actually, you know, you're, you're Muslim, but you were not committed to it. So you came back to the deen. You started practicing the deen. You have converted your ideas and your ways of looking at Islam and have decided to practice Islam. So this applies to you very well. And at the beginning, new Muslims usually, one of the first things that they're faced with is, should I become Muslim? What will my family, friends say? I'll have to change my life, give up parties, girls, boys, relationships, etc. There's all these questions that are in your mind. Can I commit? Can I do this? I mean, you've been used your whole... SubhanAllah, some people, Allahu Akbar, become Muslim when they're 75, 80, 85. I'm sure most of you have seen uh, Brother Eddie from the Dean Show. He interviewed one of the, I think he was like 85 or 90, who took Shahada at like the age of 85 or 90. SubhanAllah, their whole life, imagine in Kufr, their whole life, they're away from the truth. How hard is it? Imagine you're close to your death. So, a lot of times these questions pop up. In the youth, specifically, when it comes to youth, the issues of enjoying your life. My brother always says, he's a non-Muslim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. My brother always says, you know, you only have one life, live it up. And we know that a lot of people have the same philosophy, right? You only have one life, live it up, live it up, live it up. Okay. What about after? Well, you know, as, as the Quran says, the Quraysh should say, it will become bones and dust. Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us? And Allah tells us. He gives them the example of the rain coming from the sky. You see the earth, you see it yourself. Dead, nothing. Sometimes in the desert, man, sand. And it rains, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a sprout of green comes up in the middle of nowhere from the dead it became alive Allah is trying to point to people you think it's hard for me to bring you up when your bones and dust he can do it so he's putting people to understand to think that Allah will be able to do it and that you will be on not even just the resurrection but the yom qiyama the hisab the accountability, the judgment. What day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ إِمْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَقْنُ يُنْجِيهِ وُجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ مُسْفِرَةِ ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَةِ Allahu Akbar. What day? A man will flee from his brother, from his mother, from his father, from his wife, his children. The faces, some faces will be bright, laughing. Some will be dark. What kind of day is that? Imagine people being resurrected, living a life away from truth. There's no more turning back. That's the time when people will say, Oh Allah, send us back so we can work something good. Send us back so we can do something good. Be too late. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, when he was chasing Moses, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, through the sea. When he saw it coming, he said, Ah, now I believe. No, too late. It was too late. So we don't want it to be too late, brothers and sisters. Yes, there's many questions for non-Muslims who are close to Islam. 
for new Muslims, for existing Muslims who have come back to Islam. What, 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 this, that, why, why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Whoever fears Allah, he will make for him a way. And you think that, Kalas, what am I going to do? I have nothing. If I take Islam, everyone will turn away from me. Everyone will hate me. This is what happened to me. I became Muslim. All of a sudden, I became gharib. I became strange. All my friends that I partied with and I was with, they looked at me weird. It's like, oh, oh he's the Muslim. Oh, he became Muslim. He's crazy. He's bowing down to the, you know. My brother used to call me the bendover. Oh, you know, he's crazy, man. He gave up his girlfriend. He did this. Everyone's like, I just hear the, you know, the ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed we have tested those before them. That Allah will know those who are truthful and those who are liars. This is a strong word. Can we pass this test? Why have we become Muslims? Why have we committed to Islam? We need to ask ourselves this. Why are we Muslims? Is it because our forefathers are Muslims? Is it because we want to get married to a nice Muslim sister? Or the sister wants to get to married to a nice Muslim brother? Is it like a cool new hip-hop movement that's become like in the States, in the USA? It's a big thing now. That it's become a whole, you know, it's like there's a whole moving culture. Actually, non-Muslims are starting to dress like the Muslims in Harlem and, and in the Bronx. They're, you know, they're shortening their pants and everything, and they're wearing even kanduras, with grown beards, be like, Assalamu alaikum aqi. And, and you start talking, and you realize he's not Muslim. He is not a Muslim. And you ask him, what's up, man? Well, you know, it's like, cool, man. It's like, nice. I like, you know, this guy, most deaf or whatever, rapper, rest, uh, Muslim rapper, and this and that. And it's because, I'm not, I'm not questioning their, their, their niya. This is not what I'm doing. This is not what I'm doing. But there's a movement, and we'll discuss later on as to what's going on. But there's a movement of people that are feeling attachment to Islam sometimes for reason other than they're supposed to. And we, I'm not saying that this guy or his name is Ahmed or whatever, John or anything. I'm not pointing. I'm talking about in general. Shaklam, just in general. We cannot, as, a, as Omar uh, radiallahu anh, said, is when the Prophet ﷺ was here, we used to judge the people because Allah was revealing it to it as wahi. When he passed away, we could only judge what we see. So we only judge what we see, of course, the appearances. But we don't obviously try to go into the people's hearts and see what's their intention. But why are we Muslims? <clears throat> Is there a cultural evolution? You know, like right now, I was looking, there was an interview with, um, I believe his name is, um, he's a hip-hop artist. <clears throat> and I don't know, maybe you can help me out. I don't know if he's Muslim or not. Um, SubhanAllah. What is his name? Immortal Technique? You guys know, right? Is he Muslim? He's not a Muslim, but he like, went to Afghanistan. He's wearing like the scarves and like, you know, the Muslim like, culture he loves it. he's talking about you know he's, he's rapping about islam and the quran you know the prophet jesus is the most you know the prophet mentioned the quran he's got some interesting lines right and a lot of people are like you know now like the palestinian scarf has become like a, a fashion trend in the west right like they they wear it you know women wear it on the neck they wear nothing really but they wear like the palestinian scarf around their neck stuff like that you know so a lot of people are like it's like that something new hip a lot of people are feeling from a social justice perspective, empathy. They say, you know, we feel bad for the Muslims. And subhanAllah, and there's been non-Muslims who have gone and died for Muslims in Palestine as a human chain, human walls. And they've died because they felt like they identified. They would scream, Allahu Akbar, and you know, they know, mashallah, and this in words, and salam alaikum, this and that. And they love Islam, and they love the Muslims, but they're not Muslim. A lot of people come into Islam for, and sisters especially, for women's rights, right? They hear that Islam offers the best women's rights, and we, we hear all these lectures, and the, and I'm not saying this is not, you know, something that I'm, but I'm just looking at analyzing different, from my experience, what I've seen and talked to people, as to why people come into Islam. A lot of people come for science, right? Scientific miracles, as i just given you one, miracles. Science, Dr. Zakir Naik, may Allah bless him and, you know, and protect him and his dawah. And logic, a lot of people that Islam makes, you know, makes sense. Right? We hear that a lot of people say Islam makes sense. And I'm not saying I disagree with anything, but we need to be careful. Because all these things can be accepted, maybe. Or some can be debated. But the first and foremost reason for someone becoming a Muslim is, should be what? What? To seek Allah, okay, but what? Hmm? To be submissive, okay. Jannah, okay. 